Okay guys, so if you want to learn how to get this glam mermaid turned into a mermaid that has been attacked by fishermen and is cut up due to like pollution and things, keep watching. I'm first priming and putting on my foundation. I use the Kat Von D primer and the MAC Face and Body Foundation. I'm just going to be buffering that all over just to give my skin a little bit of an even base to work with. As you can see, I'm rocking a few spots because being a girl can be a bitch. I'm now using the Fenty Concealer just to cover up some under eye bags because our mermaid at the beginning, she's beautiful, like the typical classic perfect look. But I didn't want to go for something like the Little Mermaid, I wanted to go for an actual like fish mermaid, hence her being all blue. You could turn that into the Corpse Bride if you wanted to, but I decided to go Mermaid. I'm now using my Laura Mercier Translucent Powder just to set my base like you would any other day on any other normal makeup look. Just using the Beauty Bakery brush and putting it all over my face. And I think I need more powder. Yes I do. Get the powder. There we go. Now I'm baking under my eyes just again to stop any kind of creasing, even though it always creases. By the way guys, while I'm doing this, I want to apologise for it going in and out of focus. I'm trying to get my camera sorted and this is new. So yeah, I'm now using a contour brush that I'm not sticking out my nose and the Jeffree Star Jawbreaker palette with the darker green shade and the light blue shade. I'll leave the details in the description box to start contouring. I'm not going to lie guys, when I did this look, wasn't the way I thought it was going to go. I thought I was going to do the pretty look, but the fish look in the end I think turned out to be freaking awesome so as you can see the powder wasn't starting to work very much so i ended up using my kind of dupe of the flash palette i used the green and the light blue shade just to start contouring and this is when it starts to get more fishy and interesting i then decided on one side i just wanted darker color than the other so that didn't work out i'm now just blending it out i want her to look very very thin, very shaped and skeletal, almost skeletal, but at the same time not because remember, she is a mythical creature. So, you know, the, the way it gotta be. I'm just now adding some more darker. Sorry, guys, that's my drink. I'm now turning some dark blue onto the um, other side so it is actually even. And keep going, keep going, keep going. I'm now just adding it onto my forehead. So it's all like the areas I would typically contour because I feel like I have a big ass forehead. And for some reason I decided to put a little bit on my nose. Why the hell not? I'm now taking this fishnet kind of wig cap. You can get these from any party store or anytime you pretty much order a wig, these normally come with them. I'm taking the dark blue shade from that, co that cream palette and a sponge wedge that you can get from any um, drugstore or cosmetic store. And I'm using that to start creating my scales. I'm not going to lie guys, again I'm apologising for the focus issues, I will get this sorted. This was a pain in the butt to do, I would recommend if you can't, if it's an awkward position, maybe get somebody to help you. Me, I was doing this at 11 o'clock at night when people in my house were already asleep. So I just started doing the darker scales first and working my way on. And on the other side of the sponge I took the light blue and, come on that, that's it, you got enough blue. Uh, and I started to kind of give the light and dark effect to her scale. So I did a light blue and dark blue kind of scaling all the way through. And yes, Natalie, well done, you created scales! Now I look like a cat burglar or some sort of weird kind of fetish monster, I don't know. But I'm taking a tiny little Morphe brush 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 this is a concealer brush and I pretty much use this brush the whole way through because it ended up giving me the most defined scale so I would just wipe away the dark going with the light back and forth back and forth as you can see what I'm doing here I did have to keep going over to get the definition in those scales because sometimes when you have the fishnet over your head like that it would tend to muddle them a little bit I'm now taking that lighter one again and I'm going on the tops of my cheekbones again just to create that definition like you would with a highlighter and I'm examining my scales some more. Well done, that. I'm now decided to put it back over my head. This is where I started to find it tricky, by the way, guys. Like I said, if you were to do this, you can grab one of those wig caps. I would suggest maybe cutting it into pieces, and then that way you can do it, because then you won't get the model scales that I started to get at the first. And yes, I'm trying to figure out my camera. <laughs> guys, please leave recommendations for cameras. 
I'm now taking a MAC Pro Longwear paint pot in a dark blue shade to do my eyebrows. Just putting my eyebrows in like I normally would, but with blue. And I'm not going to lie, I kind of like the blue brow look. This is definitely going to be the start to my Halloween collection this year, guys, and I'm so excited for it, by the way. Who else is excited for Halloween? And, by the way, guys, if you see me singing and dancing, I was listening to The Little Mermaid while doing this work, so... Kind of... It explains a lot about everything on this. So yes, Natalie, get the brows on point. Let's move, move on that. Oh. Oh, by the way, guys, if you see me blinking a lot, I put green contacts in. They didn't look that green because they're two-toned and I have brown eyes. So it almost made me look like a lizard, which kind of works with the whole fish thing. Even though lizards and reptiles and fish are fish. I'm now taking that dark blue... Um, I'm sorry, I'm taking that dark blue um, paint on my chin and I'm just starting to fill out the whole face with it and see where I can go with it. I decided in the end, actually I don't want to do that, I'm just doing my eyes. I'm taking Jeffree Star Blue Blood Palette in the shade Celebrity Skin, which is the tan shade. And I'm putting that all in McLeese for a transition. I ended up using concealer for my primer, but for some reason my camera didn't pick it up. So, there you go. I'm now taking the dark green shade on the end. I can, again, I can't remember, but I will be leaving the info in the... Oh, hello, let's go to my eyeball. I will be leaving the info in the description box. I'm taking that dark green shade. This was a prominent colour in this look because I didn't want to do completely blue. I wanted some shades of green in there to break up the blue. So I'm taking this dark green kind of teal shade and I'm putting that all in my crease and really feathering it out. She's not meant to look neat and tidy, smoky eye, you know. She's gone out she's, you know, a, a fish. So <laughs> let's um, make it look very avant-garde and um, big. So with a Morphe blending brush, I am just blending that all through my crease and around. And for some reason, it starts to look really patchy in the beginning, which I didn't understand because the Jeffree Sh Star shadows never let me down. I'm taking that. Sorry, guys, I've got the hiccups. I'm taking that dark blue purple shade and I'm putting that in the outer corner and working it in the kind of finer bit of my crease and right in the crease. So it works more as a crease colour and the green ended up being more of a transition shade. Um, again guys, focus issues, I know I am fixing it. Um, so just keep blending and blending and blending guys until you're blended out completely. I've now decided to take a packing brush and the Morphe fixing spray and the glittery, I remember this, the glittery blue shade from the Jeffree Star palette. Yes Natalie, it is glitter, get excited and I'm packing that on. I decided in the end, as you're about to see, a brush didn't really work out for me, so I took my finger with that glitter shade and I put it on that way. Whenever it comes to really glittery shades, I always say use your finger because it's the easiest way to get that shadow um, packed on with the amount of pigmentation that you want and amount of oomph that you want in, in one easy step rather than having to keep going and going and going, even though I do because I bloody love glitter. So I've taken that glittery shade and looking at my eyes, got it's weird and green, and yes, I have blue shadow on my hand. I'm now taking that dark blue, no I'm not, I'm taking that ice cold white shade, putting that in the inner corner of my eye, quite heavily, um, and I'm really buffing it out, just so I can get that contrast with the really light compared to the really dark on the outside. And again, guys, bear with me with the contacts, because it's something I'm not very used to. I'm now taking that dark green shade and I'm putting that on my lower lash line and really just smudging that out. Yes. And the same on the other eye because apparently you have to have them match. Not always. There you go. Thank you camera. Yes. Work. Get the lower lash line. I'm now taking the dark blue and I'm just going even closer to my lash line with that one and working it mostly on the outer and not the inner just so it kind of gives that more depth to the outside. It's like a blue smoky eye, guys. We did a blue smoky eye. Uh, and I'm going back to the face because I decided, right, I'm done mostly with the eyes. Let's go back to the face. I'm now taking that dark blue cream with that Morphe brush. Again, guys, details in the description. And making more scales. I kind of loved I loved and hated making scales. I loved it because the effect that it gives, but I also hated it because it is so... Vividly. 
But hey, I'm going to keep going and try to make this work. Guys, I am not professionally trained. I am self-taught and a lot of my education, you can call it, is through YouTube. So there's another reason why I wanted to do these kind of videos because YouTube inspired me to do SFX more often and I didn't think I needed it. I always thought I needed a course. I took that, um, as you can see there guys, I took the fishnet and I put the dark blue there. And I'm, I kind of made a blue beard at first. I don't know why it's such a kind of blue beard, but I think I just got crazy with the scales and I put some over my ears. I'm just taking that darker blue still and working it around because I thought it'd be easier to add the darker shade and then add light on top of that. So just keep, guys, just keep working with it. It will pay off in the end and you will get your blue mermaid creature. There were so many mermaid looks I could have done, guys. Like, I was really tempted to do Ariel with the hook in the mouth, like Lamb and Gore did, but she's done that, and she, I don't think I could ever do it justice compared to what she did. Um, I'm now decided to take that, and I think I'm going to look like a burglar again. Damn you, wig cap, stay in place. There we go. And it's probably smudged all my top bit, but I'm just taking it, looking like a burglar. And I'm taking that light blue shade and I'm putting it all over this top bit. Just keep adding scales, guys. Just keep adding your scales. You just kind of have to mess around with the um, scale, the uh, fishnet for the scales. And I just kept adding more and more light blue just to keep that contrast going. And I add the dark blue again for my forehead because I feel the wig cap pretty much moved all that out of the way. You really should powder this if you're going to go out with this kind of makeup. But for me, I knew I was just going to be at home and take the pictures, do the video, and then take it off straight after. Because I think at this point it was about half eleven, quarter to twelve, and I started this at half nine, ten o'clock. So I'm just adding the light a bit on the lower jaw just so I can add the um, contrast of, you know, like a contour. That's the word, contour. And add a big old bit of the light blue on my chin. Add some light blue on my top, lower, on my upper, la upper lash line. <laughs> upper lid, uh, upper lid, upper lip. And on my nose. I just keep adding those blue contrasts, guys, and it will turn out, I promise. There we go. I'm scaly. I'm scaly, da ba dee da ba die. <laughs> I'm probably getting copyright infringement for that. Um, I then thought, oh, on a minute, something don't look right. Let's keep adding. No, we're not going to keep adding. Yes, we are going to keep adding. I want more blue on my forehead. <laughs> and there you go, you can use your teeth. And I added the light blue on this side just because I felt like that was very dark on that side. So. And some more on Mishnas. There we are. And try to cover up as much of your skin tone as possible. As you can see, I noted the blue. And I put it on my, uh, up the, under my eyebrow. And all under my eyes. And the, uh, sides of my nose. Just to make sure my skin wasn't popping through as much as possible. I felt like the genie for a while. I was like, if I just turn myself into the genie from Aladdin with scales. And as you can see, for me, I wasn't happy that it was just on my face, so I kept going and putting it on my neck. This is again awkward, guys, but I feel like the wig cap does help a little bit. It's just that thick line that you can get. But with the wig cap, you can obviously put it around your neck, and that helps you make some scales quite a bit easier. I'm now taking the light blue and I'm just popping that in the center of my neck again just to create that contour effect. Again guys this is this does get very fiddly, so it would be ideal if you had someone there to help you with it. Like I said, I did not. So I did my best and tried not to constrain myself. You 
can use your ear as an anchor, but I'm not gonna lie, ears don't exactly hold up as much as you think they would. So I just did as much as I could with my ear, and then, yeah, it didn't work out as much. So I just used a brush on its own, like, sod it, I'm making my own scales. But yeah, it's, um, it is a tricky one with fish. Now, you can decide to cut it up, which I think I do at a later point off camera. I cut it and I kind of just made one big fishnet rather than a circle of it, like one big square. But until then, keep going with what you've got, guys. I try to make this look as easy as possible and not need as many products as you would think uh, that are special effects only. So I tried using like one face palette for the colours and, you know, not as much super advanced special effects things that you would think that you would need. There are going to be looks I am going to have like prosthetics involved and transfers, so be ready for those. This I cannot wait for guys, I'm so excited for this Halloween season. I now take a Jeffree Star liquid lip, this is from the uh, Rainbow Collection. Uh, this is I think Royal I'm Royalty, the purple, and I'm putting this all over the lips. I decided to do a purple lip because it just felt like a better contrast to me rather than um, Blue. Taking some more Morphe setting spray and the Jeffree Star Brain Freeze palette with the light blue shade. I am putting that all over the high point just to create that wet effect. You know, she's a mermaid. She's in water 100% of the time, I want to say. Unless she's like aerial and goes to the surface. So yeah, just add it where you normally would add highlight, guys. Um, for some reason, I did have a bit with liner and lashes, but it's gone. But I did a, just a normal light wing liner, um, mascara, and I added pink to the lip. I'm now just adding this white glitter that you saw all over because I thought the sparkle of water kind of effect. So I'm just taking that all over the lids and on the bridge of the nose, the lips, and the high points of the face and on my forehead. Just loose glitter. This was terrifying for me because at one point I thought I dropped the bottle, the tub of glitter. Turns out I didn't. I decided to change my top and put my wig on. This wig on is from Amazon. I think everybody owns this purple wig. Um, and I decided to just paint my chest a little bit more. And this is when I cut up the wig cap because I was like, sod this, I can't do it anymore. This again, guys, is so finicky. And I will repeat myself. Just get somebody to help you. It's so much easier to have someone's help. But I'm just painting some more scales on my chest because I thought I would actually have it down to the chest kind of area. Make it a bit better. And just add some more spray and I think some more highlights. Yep, all on the decolletage. I think it's called your clavicle bone. And on the face because, you know, highlight is life. And on the shoulders, even though we didn't really have the shoulders. And this, oh, more spray, make her soaked. This is my Glam Mermaid. Um, yeah, you can totally go like this for your Halloween, because hello, it's still pretty cool and funky, the fact that you've got scales all over your face, and that's it, put your wig back down. <laughs> Um, but yeah, this was a lot of fun to do, just this mermaid, but for me, I like it to be a little bit more controversial, so check out for the next bit. So if you are still with us, we are now doing the um, aftermath of an attack for the mermaid. Now this attack can be in any way, shape or form for your story. Mine is kind of beaten by the rocks from a storm or she could be taken eaten by a shark, you don't know. I've mapped out where I'm going to have all my cuts. I'm now using liquid latex. This is some of the easiest methods to do, guys, by the way, for cuts. I'm just using liquid latex and cotton balls. I basically roll out the cotton and I'm going to stick this on the sides of the latex to create our wound. 
So this is fiddly guys, I'm not going to lie to you, but once you nail it you can create some of the most realistic and also theatrical cuts out there. Once your latex has been put down, add some, no cotton sorry has been put down, add some more latex, make sure everything is stuck down in place and you want to add a good helping of latex on top of it. get that latex on there. Not gonna lie guys, if you have never worked with latex before, this stuff stinks. It is a really, it's got a lot of ammonia in it. You can get low ammonia latex, but for me, I'm using a Mayron one at the moment and it's got quite a high bit. Ones that you would find in party shops and um, like Superdrug and Boots when they have their Halloween collection, they do have very high ammonia. So I would try to find either Mayron's, it's not too high, uh, Krylon, Ben Nye, uh, there's loads that you can find otherwise. I'm just going to keep adding that cotton and latex to create my wounds all over where I made my scars. Yeah. And look, all of a sudden I'm picking at it. So what you want to do, the end of a brush or a scalpel if you've got one, not scalpel, um, yeah, kind of like a scalpel. You kind of want to just create in that almost dry bit the wounds holes. So once you've done that and you've done all your liquid latex and cotton, I'm just going to start painting it. I'm painting it blue. So the reason I'm painting it dark blue is because I want to kind of create a shadowing and the, you know, the darkness from her coming out because mermaids get angry guys when they're getting cut to pieces. Uh, so yeah, I'm just gonna keep painting over it. I started to start. I went with a brush at first, that same brush I've been using, but I found that it wasn't working as well. So I took a sponge wedge that you can get again from any like pharmacy store or SFX store or anywhere, and then you can even get them in Poundland. And I'm just painting it all blue to cover up that liquid latex. Don't worry about covering up tons because you will with blood and stuff later. I'm now adding, so once you've done that, I'm now adding the black um, from that cream paint just in the centre to create more shadow and depth to it and I'm kind of spiking it out everywhere just to add more effect and more detail to it. You don't have to do this set but I find it really does make it look a bit more juicy and realistic. You want to do this guys with brushes that you do not care about, I just get cheap ones from Mayron or Primark or you'll see in a moment I use a paintbrush so things like that because you don't want to use good brushes because otherwise they will get ruined because of the latex and all the paint. So once you've added all your darkness and details and you've made sure you've made it the texture the way you want, um, just keep keep going with it guys it does take a while I'm just adding some of that black mixed with some dark blue on the like, on the um, inner the eye bag area we'll call it under the eyes just to you know give her some more distress with it and on her lips so yeah ugh, dead. I add some more fix plus just to keep it looking wet and juicy and I'm now adding my favorite thing in the world Ben Nye's gap blood um, with a big big paintbrush I decided to add this in you don't have to use a giant paintbrush you can use a sponge I just thought it'd be easier and this was getting to a point about midnight guys and I was tired so uh, I'm just gonna keep adding that blood in bit by bit don't add too much at a time because it can then look a bit too much but um, yeah I'm just gonna keep adding anyway I added with that paintbrush it gives you really good splotchy effect so I just add it everywhere to kind of create you know blood everywhere and I'm adding some more Ben Nye juice scab blood juice in the wound just to make it all more juicy and fresh and gross the good thing is with Ben Nye scab blood it does dry down so if you want your blood to look more dry down it's it does look it does do that and so you shouldn't transfer too much but I like it when it's fresh and juicy just adding bits around my lips and just so you know she's gonna be cut up everywhere guys not just those so I'm just adding in all the little blood details that I need to add some more in that big wound which was actually my favorite one in the end kind of where her gills are and just gonna keep keep adding blood guys I know I said not to add too much but for something like this where it's so over the top add tons and some around my nose you know just to do a little bit more and I've been wicked up again and 
this is our tax mermaid guys i really hope you enjoyed this please subscribe like the video and um share it comment i love you guys i can't wait for you to see the season bye